Good morning, everyone. I think I'm going to show us a technique called chaos curls. I feel like it's a time when we can take things that maybe don't make sense in life or in world, or maybe we're just having a dry spell in our art and we can channel that chaotic mind or feeling straight into these pendants, right? It's a simple technique. It's a beautiful technique. And we can basically make it in any shape that we want to. So this one is the moon, the crescent moon. I'm calling this serenity, chaos curls. I'll show us how to shape this moon. And then at the end of the video, I'll give a couple of inspiration shapes where I'll show you just how to how to shape out maybe a heart and a couple of other things and then you can fill the insides with your with your chaos and turn and turn your chaotic situation into a beautiful situation okay so here we go I'm starting with 13 inches of 18 gauge square copper wire this could be round wire as well and to shape the the crescent, I like to use a dowel that is just a little bigger than a half an inch. I'd say it's about a half an inch in diameter. And I'm going to just center it, center my wire on it. And I'll take my wire all the way around. It doesn't even have to be even. You don't have to worry almost to the point where they touch. It's right about here. I'll take a nice hearty flat nose plier and right about here where I think the tip of the moon might be. This wire's on top so I'm going to just bend it up a little bit so I can get to it. From this side I'm going to grip it. I'm going to brace my thumb right here and I'm just going to bend it back on itself. I'm not pushing. I'm not pulling. I'm just basically bending it back on itself. And then I'll do the same with this side. I'm just going to eyeball the approximate spot. It doesn't have to be perfect. And I'll just use my finger and I'll push that wire straight back. Okay. From here, I'll just do a small little tap on this top one. You don't want to squeeze it all the way closed, or you could. I like to just get it right about there. And this wire should be kind of point it up a little bit. This bottom one, do the same, get it right about here. Just give it a squeeze, not too hard, just like that. And the wire should be kind of shooting out the bottom of it here. So we'll hold it right here. If you need to flare it out a little bit more, you can. I like my crescents to kind of be a little more thick right around here. So now you'll just elegantly curve this wire to the other side and just shape your crescent. Get about right here, hold it all right here, and just turn it down to meet this point right here. Take a look and see if you love that. If you do, then go with go with it. I'm going to take this side and I'm just going to tilt it up a little bit more and make sure that I have a nice open space there. I'm watching this three-quarter circle and I'm making sure it stays nice. So I've got my other wire just behind it, shaping it with my finger until I love it. And I think I love that. 
Just make yours whimsical. It's probably about a half an inch space in the diameter of mine. And you could make, you know, this circle a little more closed if you want. Put a little more turn on it if you want. Flare out the body a little bit more if you want. Whatever you want to do. I think I like that a little better. Okay. When you get the shape where you want it, right here at the top, you're just going to take the wire and turn it up. Not quite about, I'd say that's the curve probably makes it about a quarter of an inch right about here. So just watch your shape. Take the plier. Just push the wire up. Don't worry about the squareness of it. Right about here, I like for this wire to be on the outside and this wire to be on the inside between these two. And then this one, I'm just going to leave it sitting right there. And this one, I'm just going to make it curve to meet that line. Kind of like that. We're going to cover all this up, so don't stress. Just shape it. And then right about where they meet, Hold the nose of it and push the wire up so it sits next to the other one. Just leave it just like that. That looks pretty good. And you still can shape things right now if you don't care for it, but I'm pretty happy with that. It's whimsical. I'm going to go ahead and hammer this nice curve just to stiffen it up a little bit. Hammering is optional. You don't have to hammer it. Just get my bench block out, lay everything flat. Make sure that that little edge is not too bulky right here and right here. And then I'll get my chasing hammer my nice chasing hammer with the wide curved edge and I'll just tap along here a little bit. Start at the middle, hit and strike and pull out a little bit. Just work your way along the outside edge of the moon. really looking to change the shape of anything. I was just looking to harden this wire a little bit, flare this out a little bit. Okay. And again, hammering is optional, so don't stress it. I like that. Or if it goes out of shape a little bit, you just reshape it. There you go. Okay, so from here now, it's pretty much all design because we're not trapping a stone in there. So I'm going to use 20 gauge square wire. I mean, uh, 22 gauge square wire. You could use round wire. You could mix round and square. This is a good technique if you have scraps that are six or seven inches long. I'm going to take about 18 inches of this wire and I'm just going to bend it in half here because I like to work with two of them at a time. Minus square doesn't really matter to me if it goes up on its point or not. It's kind of interesting if it does. 
And I'll just squeeze this together a little bit. And I'll come over my moon whoop, so that my long wires are going towards the body of the moon. And I can just start right here by straddling these two little bale wires or wires that might become my bale. We'll see how this goes later on. I'll show you some options. And I'm just holding them together side by side. I put my thumb right there so I can start a turn on them. You're just making a nice tight turn, working both of these wires together. We're right here at the tip of the moon, so it's a skinny space. Make a real tight, tight turn and flatten it out. Okay. So then we'll come into the body. Just work your nice curve here. Hold it right here. And we'll turn back out in this direction and make a loop. So I'm just holding it. I did not go around the center. You could. I'm going to keep us to the outside first. So just work them both together. Chaos curls are nice because they can be whatever you want them to be. You don't have to be perfect and they work out beautifully at the end of things. So just make a nice circle right there. Bring your wires back out to the outside of the moon. Let it kind of slope off the edge here. Try to stay within the shape of your frame. It's okay to let it go out a little bit. Hold it right here. Now we're going to take make a long curve out of these wires. Just come back through. I'm still holding it right here. 22 gauge is pretty lightweight, so it should be easy. You see how the wires are flowing? You're just going to kind of go with that. Take it all the way around. I'm putting my finger right here so I can grab that edge. Just straighten your wires out. Don't worry if they're twisted. Don't worry about anything. So come back in. We're just going to do another little turn right here or wherever you want. It's going to stay above the edge. Go all the way around. And now from here, I'm going to come under. It's a little bit tricky to get in here, just like that. I'm going to come all the way over. Your wire is going to get a little bit shorter now. You can dive through there. We are always looking to stay with flow and elegance. So here's a nice curve. I'm going to grab this edge right here to lock it down. Use your thumb and just press it down right there. Come back up. I don't have any plan. I'm just doing what, what feels good. I'm watching the overall shape of my moon and I'm making sure that any elements that go outside of that shape, you know, kind of stay close to it. It's okay a few millimeters over, but you don't want a big bulge up here and then everything closed and then a big bulge. So you're always looking for that outside shape. And I'm right here with my two wires. Always looking to make some elegance and you can always pick up your pliers, some nice flat pliers, do a little squeeze or a little pinch if you need to, to help you get around a curve. Okay. My wires are here right now. They're kind of going this way, so I'm just going to go with it. And if it, they get short, they get a little bit harder to work with. So you can just work them one at a time if you want. Could I stick a stone in here? Sure. In this example, we're not going to. In this project, we're just making chaos curls right now. Now I want to connect again. I like to connect, you know, if you don't connect once, you know, connect the next time. 
you don't want too many runs. We're going to do more wire over this. So right now it's it's quite all right to make longer runs. I'll just dive in here. Pull back a little bit. Don't worry if the wire gets a little bit munchy. Just work them in there. Make them kind of pretty. And then since they're short now, we'll just lock them down right here. I can lock them down in a couple ways. I can use that and make some curlies, or I can just make some turns over this edge and call it a day. I'm going to kind of push up this way so I have a nice flow. And I'll just bring these two ends back down here. And I'll just make them into, you know, a little turn down here. So I'll trim off some of this. Even though it's chaos curls, you still want to control the look as you're working. You're not just scrambling to make nonsense, but you're trying to make beautiful nonsense. So I'm just working these two wires into a nice little curve down here that are going to lock them in. And this is my first run of wire. So I know I've got more wire coming over this. So it's okay to leave it a little bit loosey right there. Just kind of press it down. I'll bring some more wire on top of that. I like to look at that here in the front. And you just want to make sure that as you work, you know, your piece stays nice and flat and you stay within the vision of your frame here. So now I've got my first layer down. That looks pretty good. I'm going to continue with 22 gauge square wire. And I'll get another 18 inches or so, or a couple of feet, whatever you want to work with. And I'll do the same thing. Bend it in half. Get them kind of side by side. Find a nice place to connect. Nothing wrong with connecting where we just were. The bale wires are a good place to start your first couple. So I'll just slip right over that. Give it a little pinch to settle it. And then I can start my wires. I don't have to start on top. I can always start from the bottom and then crawl through to the top. Since this one started at the top, I, I will go ahead and just start down here on this side. And I'll just make a little turn. I'm just literally making a curve out of them on the back side here. It follows my line naturally. I'm just going to dive into here in the middle. And I'll come up through this big space right here. I'm watching this, this curve and this line. Make sure my wire stays nice. And I'm just going to come down here and swing around this pole or this uh, frame edge following the line of maybe these curls here. I'll come back up from the bottom, push a little, pull a little, stay graceful with it, layer out a little bit more, follow that first line, but maybe I'll dive to the inside this time instead of to the outside. Come up here. Make sure your nice moon stays nice and flat. I might dive through here this time. So I'm going to straighten out my leading wire. You always gently stroking that leading wire to give you grace. You never want to just dive through stuff with kinky wire. Okay, just follow that line down. 
make it pretty. Put your thumb here so that you can flatten that little curve you just made. Put this pillow in there. I'm just going to come up and around, kind of follow this little line right here. Just like that. I'm not too far outside the frame of my moon, so I'm feeling pretty good. Nothing says I have to use this entire length. If I've got no moves without doing something awkward, then I might just curl it and cut it off right there and take the length and go start again, okay? So we're always looking to make beautiful moves out of this chaos. I'm going to turn a little circle right into here. Stay on top this time. Put my finger right there and get a nice tight turn. Swing around to the back. That looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to flip to the back to make sure my turn is nice. I don't want to wreck this nice curve in my moon here. So I'm going to dive deep and not leave it right there. Right? So I went really far back to stay within the point, keeping everything nice and flat. And I can come up. There's some space right here. You know, you just look, take your time. See what you feel like. Sometimes you have to take your nylon jaw and give love taps to settle things. Make sure things stay nice and flat. It hardens the wire up as we go. Make sure you don't ruin any design while you're doing that. Just control everything. My wires are here in the back, so I'll fill up some negative space out here in the back. So I'll just make a little turn. I'll follow the line right here. Make a little turn this way. I'll flip over to the front right here. I'm following that line below it. See that? Flip over to the front right here and see what I can do. Maybe I'll just flip right over and get into the middle. Maybe I'll swing a loop right here. And I can go the other way too. Right? I don't need to do a loop in the same direction all the time. You just guide it. Do what you feel is pretty. I like that. Since I don't really have a comfortable move. See, here's where I'm colliding into my spirals, and I might not have a comfortable move going there, so I might just come back up here. The wire's pretty short. Follow this line right here, this curve. Take them to the back. They just kind of build themselves. I'll hold it right there. And I'll just flip these two ends back here. Find a nice spot to end them because they're pretty short. I take a little pinch right here and make sure I got that bend nice and snug. Make sure the pretty is in the front and it is. I'll go ahead and trim these two off right here. with just enough to, maybe I'll just end them right there. Just pinch both of those nicely back. Okay, take a look at your moon. Make sure that your shape stays or you know sometimes you have to alter it a little bit as you work and you add wire that's looking pretty fun you don't have to fill all of it up we have these two wires up here in the top too so when i use the little wire i kind of like to fill the body up and then 
you can bring the big wire down as kind of, you know, a big accent. And we leave a little spot for the bail too. So you can work yours until you love it. You can put more in there if you want to. I go ahead and just tap everything with my nylon jaw. As I'm tapping, I'm also holding the wire so that it doesn't shift. Okay. Now you can decide if you want any more little wire or not. I'm liking that. I'm gonna push this up a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and probably get another piece. I wanna put a little bit more in the body. So I'm gonna get another 18 inches of 22 square. And I'm just gonna add another layer to the top here. I'll just connect to this little bare nose right up here in the front this time. So I'm just going to slip my wire in there. And you can pinch it or you can literally just turn it. Right, just add it to that little space. They'll be on opposite sides, but you can always fix that. Just jump to one side. Actually, let's jump to the front. Backwards of the camera here. We'll just pinch that little spot. Make it nice and neat. Okay, so I just a little wrap right there to get it on and we don't have to turn them together like here's a little tiny place that might need a curl I can take my single wire and make a tiny little curl there flip around to the back come back up here and just join the other wire so it gives me a little something there without the bulk of both of these. I have my two wires up top for the bail still and for big wire design. So I'm just gonna go through here and make some more design. I've got a little bit coming off of the frame here and here. So I'm just gonna try to level that out in some of these places where I feel like I might need something. Maybe not. All right, you can work yours the way you want. So right here, make a little turn right here in the middle in the back. Remember that the back can be very pretty also. So you don't, you know, it can be a two-sided situation. So, so here's my wire, it's coming up make it a little more graceful it's okay I did a little turn in the back there's my curl keeping everything flat and I filled in that little odd space there now my next move might be to lock it all in by diving into here so I'm holding it in the back I'm taking both wires and I'm jumping through push a little Straighten out the leading wire, pull a little, push a little, work patiently. Get the wires on a little bit of a slant. Straighten out the leading wire. Go back and forth if you need to to tighten that up a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Now jumping over the top would be odd right here. See, I kind of got an odd kind of too big up there for my moon. That's okay. I'll come back up with this and I'll level that out. I feel like I need something more right here. And that's a good opportunity to take this wire back up. So, you know, if I went to the front here, 
I guess I do have a nice move. I'm always looking for the nice graceful move. Put my finger right there and make a nice line to go back up. Yeah. That looks pretty good there. Okay. See, I have a little bulge here that I feel like, you know, makes it not look symmetrical. So I'm just going to widen this up a little bit. I didn't draw a moon shape on the paper when I started. I just went for it. But you could draw a little something so that you can stay within form. I'm just going to make some bulk here, some pretty bulk. So I'm going to stay above the frame a little bit. I'm in the back now. And I'm just making a curve so that I go back up. There it is. And I got this nice curve out of it. You can jump back over right here. Make a nice tiny little curve going this way. I like that in proportion much better. Okay. Now I can come up and just end these wires. I've got this big wire yet to come down, or I could go fill this little bit. Let's see, maybe I'll just do that. Come down to the back. Just flip right over. So you can reach that spot there. It's a lot of wire we just added, so just make sure that, you know, everything, you're always tapping everything with your fingers, making sure that things lay down nice. So I just flip that over. I'm going to come over here and fill that little space. Make a turn in the back here. And the back will look really pretty as well if you work, you know, keeping that in mind. Okay, that looks pretty good. Just going to end these wires right here. There's a little space right there. Take them up. Kind of short now, so I'll just pinch. And I can cut them and just do a little tie right there, or a little turn, I mean, rather than trying to add too much bulk right there. So I've got these two ends. I'll just use my bent nose, turn them in cleanly, give it a nice little pinch so that they lay down, but they're not in the way. And that's a beautiful moon sculpture. So now I'm just going to look and adjust things if I need to. I like to lay it down. Make sure that I'm symmetrical in my moon. Might need to reshape it a little bit. It's intended to sit like this when the bale goes on. Right? So I just want to make sure that that looks like a moon, a half a moon or a crescent to me. I like to use the end of my pliers, the rubber end, and I like to just tap everything down. Make sure that you don't change any beautiful elements. Things tend to shift until we get some bead balls tied on. So I'm just taking the end and I'm pressing down, settling my pendant, settling my loops. Okay. Making sure to shape my moon. I love that. That feels pretty good. So I have these two wires up here now that I can use just to add some bulk, um, big wire and texture to the design. And so I want to leave, I need to make sure also to leave myself a bale. So I could flip them over and make a traditional bale if I wanted to right now. 
you know, I don't need to do that. I just need a little loop for my veil. So what I can do is use a round nose plier. If I can find my round nose plier, okay. I put a little back bend to them. I'm going to use them in the, one in the front and possibly one in the back, but I'll curve them both to the front for now. So I'll get right here with my plier about midway. I don't need too big of a space. I just need to be able to get a little chain or jump ring through there. And I'm just making a turn. I'm bringing these two wires clean into the front of my moon. That leaves me a little space for a chain and it leaves me big wire down here to do some design with. So I'll use my flat nose so I can really get a grip on it. Just hold it right there. Make sure you can get at that wire. And I'll just swing this one out a little bit and I'll swing this one out staying close to my my moon pendant that looks nice and now you can do you know anything with these um, just make sure these are the primary you know they're going to be thicker so they're a focus wire just tap down that veil with enough space to get a chain through so you want to do something nice with it i think right here with the long one i'll hold it right here I'm going to make a total 360 curve right here. Put some big wire in that little space right there. That's pretty good. I'll take it this way. Make sure everything is flat. If that's not as small as you want it, you can use some round nose pliers to help you grab and turn it a little bit. Make it a little smaller. I'm going to take this wire down now into this space. I might just leave a nice big giant spiral right there because I've kind of got like a big hole right there. There's not too much more to this wire, so I might just do that. So I'd make your circle as big as you want it for the center of your moon. I'm going to cut it right there. Take my round nose plier hold the curve right here so that you have some leverage. Get on the very tip of that wire and turn a nice spiral. Get a curve going on. Come back and make it a little tighter if you want to. Dip mine a little bit too much so I'll open it back up. And that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and um, hammer that as well. Take my plier and just make that a little more round. I'm going to go ahead and hammer that bit. It's still loose. You don't have to hammer yours. I'm just doing mine. Make sure it's flat. I'm going to pull this out 90 degrees. My hinge, of course, is here. Right here at the top. Just enough to reach it. I'm going to go ahead and cut the munchy tip of that off. I'm going to lay it down on my bench block here, upside down, so that I'm hammering the inside that lays against the wire. I'm just going to flare out this little spiral.
remember in hammering, you're not just smashing down on it. You're directing the metal, telling it where to go. You could sand that if you want to. You could hammer some of this if you wanted to. But that's all I'm going to do. So to get it to lay back down, I'm going to take my plier and hold it right here at the hinge. And I'm going to draw back a little bit as I push this forward a little bit. I'm just going to lay it right back down into place. We're certainly going to tie all of that. Make sure that you don't ruin the space for your bale up here. And get a chain through that. So that's nice. It gives me some texture. Can't just leave it there, right? So we'll have to tie it once we add the bead balls and such. But that's looking really pretty right now. And I've got one more big wire up here. I've got a space that I can do a nice curl into right here with some big wire. I might need to trim that. Eh, I turn it first. So I'm going to hold all this with my hand, my thumb, so I have some leverage. Brace on your finger right here and start a nice open turn and work into this space right here. That looks pretty good. I love that actually. So I'm going to go ahead and hammer that too. I'm going to pull it forward right here at my hinge, or you can actually just pull it back this way and curve it. Get back on your bench block. Cur hit it right here at the curve. Hit and pull back. Just on that little curve there so you can flatten it out. And you can take your plier to help you hold that bale and just work that wire back into its place. Very nice. Just like that. I love the way that's looking. So I think I might stop with just that and start adding some ties. Looks great on both sides. So I'll go ahead and take my nylon jaw, do some strategic tapping. You don't want to change the shape of anything, but you just want to give love taps all the way around your pendant. Make sure that things are settled. And that looks great. Now is the time to sand anything. If you feel like you need to sand anything, you can take your Dremel or your hand sandpaper and do any light sanding here. But here also is where you can start to plan for some bead balls. And before I do anything, I just kind of like to take them and drop them onto the pendant here and there to see what I like. I might put a big one there. I might do a small cluster right here. Some different shapes and sizes. I don't like them in a line like that, so start over. This is where it gets fun. And you can just plan for where you want to add these. I like to try to find the crevices and, you know, places within the pendant that, you know, would be real cute. It's an, they don't all have to be copper. You can do, these are hematite, these other little ones that I have. Oh. I just put it back there where I said I didn't want three in a row. So anyway, you can work yours and start to figure out cute places where you might tie some. There's little channels where you might do some varying sizes. Something like that. I love that. So now you can use either 28 or 26. 
gauge or even 22 gauge half round to tie these bead balls into place. You could also just use, if, if the holes are big enough and you wanted to add one more squirrely wire, you could also use 24 gauge or even 22 gauge round, you know, just for different texture. But anyway, I kind of lay them out. I don't know that they'll actually all go back into those same places by the time I'm done. But the other, whoop, the other thing I like to use on these moons are these little melted bead ball ends, melted head pin ends. Um, I use half round wire, half round 22, and I just melt little balls. And that way I can add ties and add what appears to be beads onto my piece and not have them actually be beads. So I'm going to use these and then I'll use some of those. But you're looking for places that need obvious ties, but you're also looking, you know, to make sure that it stays pretty and decorative. So I'm just going to drop this one here. Obviously my two big wires up top need a tie of sorts. Um, you can just work around yours. So I'm going to come up here and probably dive this one into this space right here. Whoop. Maybe not. So I'm just going to take this one. They'll come through here like this. I like to look in the back to see if there's a nice spot for me to tie off that doesn't interfere with design if I don't actually need it to hold anything together. I just like to find strategic spots. And since I'm working half round wire, I'm making sure that it goes in either one direction or the other. If you were working 26 gauge and tying bead balls on, it would be the same. You would just thread the bead ball and then come to the back. Make sure that you find strategic places to tie off to. Turn the end down, make sure nothing is scratchy back here. And there goes one. And now I'll find another place. So I'll use a bead this time and I'll use some 22 gauge square wire, which is what we were using to make the chaos curls with. The holes in my beads are big, so I'm just going to center it, use this bigger wire, and I'm just going to twist it between my fingers. I'm going to go around, I'm going to go under, and just make a little knot. Make sure that your bead shows. And now you can add this to your moon and use the ends to add more wire or tie things down. I think this is a good place here. And I'll just take it and shape these so that I can dive under. I'll straddle those wires right there and then my bead ball right there that looks pretty good it's not too bulky make sure it lays down and stays you know nice with your moon and you don't have a big bump right there and then you can figure out what to do about tying them off right here so I've got my two ends easily I can come up here and use it for a little design pinch it down make sure this other end at least gets tied to something i have a little spot right here i can go into i'm holding the the bead ball down to make sure that it doesn't shift while i tie it on i'm just tying it on right there Maybe I'll take this one and come to the back 
and make a little curl right there because I've got a little spot I could do right there to make it cuter. The magic of this happens when we patina this and all of these highlights of these bigger wires and the wires on top come to life. Dig around those and do a little curl. Snip that munchy tip off if you got one. Take a nylon jaw. Tap that down, harden it. Tap all this down. Keeping your moon, of course, level and flat as you work. Press down around that little ball you just added. Make sure your design elements stay within the frame of your moon. And don't worry too much. It all works out to be beautiful at the end. Just make sure you're watching your, your shape, your overall shape as you're designing because things will move. And then, you know, as you're pressing down to harden things and tie things off, see these elements will move. So just make sure you're watching what goes on. And then obviously if something's moving a lot, you have to tie that down, right? So we're down here. We just added that little bead ball. I just went around here. If I don't need the wire, I can just trim it out. You know, so I like to fold it over. Cut it with just enough space to turn it under and turn it down. Okay. We'll get another bead ball here and I will use 26 gauge wire just as a tie wire to show you how to turn tie one on to the or to line up a few of them. You can put your beads on in the size that you like them. I have copper beads coming. I just don't have any matching copper beads right now. So I'll just do them in hematite and copper. But you get the idea. You could do gemstone beads too. If you're going to do gemstone, I would sand everything first, patina everything, and then add your gemstones. Okay, so you'll just find a cute place for that. Maybe I'll Go right in here, inside that little spiral. I like that. So I'll find a little place to tie off. I like to position them first. Make sure you like them there, and then find your places to tie. And I do like that there. So obviously I have convenient spaces just by diving through to the back side. Make sure that there's no slack. Find a nice place to tie these two. And for me, I need something to tie this big wire down. So I'll go ahead and just tie over it there one stitch. You don't have to do a bunch of stitches. This is 26 gauge, so it's a little stiffer. And I'm going to use the frame wire below it to make it tight so that it's not unsightly of above. So I'm just going two or three times around there. If you have to wrap up above, just make sure that it's attractive that it doesn't just look like a piece of utility somewhere, utility tie. So I tied that to the bottom here. I'm making sure my beads lay the way I want them to. I have another side I need to tie off. Still. So that's pretty good. Come down here and I'll find a space here at the back that's discreet and nice. Got a nice convenient frame right here. Whoop. 
make sure to pull it tight so that there isn't any slack. Wrap two or three times. You could have done this to any of the wires. You know, it doesn't have to be the side frame here. I just went there. I like that. The way that looks. So just keep working yours until you love it. Cut these off back here. Give a little tap, make sure that nothing is scratchy. Give a little tap to the inside here, make sure that nothing is scratchy. And then continue to work around your piece. That's cute. I may change those, I'm not sure, but you get the idea. So I'll just keep working mine now. And you can certainly keep working yours. And I can also use 22 gauge half round wire to tie these on if your wire fits through the V ball. I need, I feel like one right in here. So I'm just gonna bring it to the center of my wire, make a little pin out of it, beat it through the space that I want and make sure that it straddles A wire so that I can tie it into place just like that. Hold it here so that it's tight and doesn't jiggle and there's no slack and then just tie these on to nearby places that make sense that don't change your design. Go back and forth, make sure it's tight. If you need to go a couple of times, do that. It's always a good idea to go a couple of times. Tie it off or cut it off with just enough to turn it under. Make sure the end tucks so that there's no slack and so that there's no scratch, make sure you're tight, and then tie off the other side. Okay, and that tied that big wire down for me, added a bead ball there. I could probably stitch these two together if I felt like this one needed a tie down, it probably does put a bead in there and get these tied or, you know, stitch some weave even if you want to. So just keep working yours. All right, so I added a bunch of little bead balls everywhere. I went ahead and used 22 gauge half round and tied these two big wires together right here. Just made a few stitches just to make sure that they never separated. I added a bead ball here and tied the arm down as well and a few others. I'm pretty happy with this shape and design and hopefully you're happy with yours. I went off camera and I also sanded everything quickly with the Dremel. I didn't need too much, just you know where my pliers were hitting it pretty hard and uh, where I saw a nick or two. I sanded an area or two in the back here where I felt like there might have been a scratch. And then I just took my pliers and made sure that the shape of my crescent moon is pleasing to me. So you can go through and you know push edges like this if you need to. You can certainly do small tapping if you need to, and just make sure that the overall shape 
is something you're happy with. And that's it. We can go off and patina this now and enjoy our beautiful creation. So I'll be right back with this all finished. If you're not going to patina yours, you can go ahead and add your favorite, our favorite ball chain right now and enjoy it. That looks really great. It hangs really nicely. I want to make sure that that veil lets it hang the way I want to, and it does. And again, you can just, you know, it's still malleable enough that you can shape it a little bit and make sure that the overall crescent is what you love. All right, you guys, I'll be back with this all polished up and you'll see the final result. Well, that worked out quite nicely. I just finished putting a patina and a polish on this beauty and I love how it turned out. So I hope you enjoyed this project. You can stay tuned at the end of this and you can see how to make a couple more shapes that you can fill in with your beautiful chaos curls. So please leave me comments, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this project and please don't forget to smash the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed to my channel for more free wire wrapping tutorials and we'll see you for the next one. Thanks you guys, much love. You can use any kind of shape that you want for your chaos curls. So I'll just demonstrate if you want to make a heart. I'm using another 13 inches of 18 gauge square soft copper wire, but you could certainly use round. And I'm just making a V at the center of it. Your heart doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Just make a nice V shape. And then about an inch or so up, just take my finger so I can create a bend. And I'm just creating a shape that I like and bringing the wire back down to the center. Make sure that it's all nice and flat on one plane. And you'll take the other side and roughly at the same one inch or so, you'll just curve it. Bring it down right next to the other one and create a little heart shape that you like. I like to bring the wires just side by side. And again, this is just the frame for your chaos curls, so you can create it however you want. And the heart shape doesn't have to be perfectly perfect. Right about up here, about in the crevice of the heart, you can take your plier, and it doesn't matter if your square wires turn up on their edges. Just keep control over it and bring the wire straight up. You'll still have time to make adjustments. And this side, do the same. Grab it about where you think is appropriate for the look that you want. Just bring it straight up. Fiddle these two a little bit. Make them come together and fit. You can use those as a bail. And this is your nice heart shape that you can put your chaos curls in. If you want to hammer it, you can hammer it in the same way. Just flare out your curves here. everything a nice tap, make it hard. And now you have a heart shape. And you can just add your chaos curls to this 
flip these bail wires down and do some big wire design if you want to as well. Okay, so thanks again you guys. We'll see you for the next one.